Samantha Ray's knuckles were white on the steering wheel as she guided her sleek black BMW down the winding road that led into the heart of her hometown. With each passing mile, the weight in her chest grew heavier, memories rising unbidden like specters in the misty morning light. She hadn't set foot in Willowbrook for ten years. Not since the day she'd left for college, vowing never to look back. To escape the suffocating grip of her family's expectations and the scars they'd left on her battered heart. But death, it seemed, didn't give a damn about vows. Or scars. Her mother was gone. The indomitable Eleanor Ray finally felled by the cancer she'd battled so fiercely, so privately. Samantha had only found out from the obituary, coldly worded and clinical. No tearful phone call from her sister, Olivia Dot. No final reconciliation at their mother's bedside. Just an mm, impersonal summons. A duty discharged. Grief and anger warred in Samantha's throat as she turned down the oak-lined street of her youth. The sprawling Victorian house loomed at the end, as imperious and imposing as ever. How many nights had she lain awake in her room on the third floor, dreaming of escape? of a life where she was more than just a pawn in her mother's ruthless social machinations. Blinking back, searing tears, she pulled into the circular drive, gravel crunching beneath her tires. She took a shuddering breath, schooling her features into the cool, practiced mask that had served her so well in the courtroom. The mask that concealed the lost, lonely girl still rattling around inside her ribcage. The front door swung open before she could even knock. And there was Olivia, as poised and polished as ever in her black sheath dress and tasteful pearl earrings. Not a hair out of place. Not a crack in her flawless facade. Samantha, dot nut. Her sister's voice was clipped, emotionless. I'm so glad you could make it. The unspoken hung between them, bitter as wormwood. For the funeral. Not for the last wretched months of their mother's life. Olivia, dot. Samantha stepped into the foyer, the click of her heels on the marble floors echoing like gunshots. You look well. A meaningless pleasantry. A shield. They had always been adept at wielding words like weapons, the Ray women. Rapier wit and cutting remarks, honed to a killing edge at their mother's knee. Spare me the false niceties, Olivia said coldly. We both know why you're here. And it's not to pay your respects. Samantha's lips thinned. Believe it or not, I did love our mother. Despite everything. Funny way of showing it. Olivia turned on her heel, leading the way into the lavish sitting room. Staying away for a decade. Ignoring her calls, her letters. Breaking her heart. She didn't have a heart to break, Samantha snapped, the old bitterness rising like bile in her throat. She had a calculator. And we were just numbers she could plug into her perfect equation of a life. Olivia whirled, green eyes flashing. So like their mothers. How dare you? Ladies. A smooth, cultured voice cut through the rising tension. Perhaps we could save the recriminations for our... After the service? Samantha turned, heart stuttering at the sight of the man leaning against the mantel. Tall and lean with carved cheekbones and eyes the color of a winter sky. He wore a perfectly tailored black suit, elegantly disheveled hair falling over his brow. Devastating. That was the word that whispered through her mind, followed swiftly by dangerous. Samantha, Olivia said tightly, meet my fiancé, Luca Moretti. Fiancé, de I. The words slammed into Samantha like a physical blow, rocking her back on her heels. She'd known Olivia was seeing someone. Her mother's last letter had been full of gushing praise for the charming Italian gentleman who had swept her flighty, frivolous daughter off her feet. But to see him in the flesh, this darkly magnetic man, standing in her family home like he belonged there, it stirred something treacherous in Samantha's blood, something that felt perilously close to desire. Luca crossed to her, hand outstretched. Samantha Dot, I've heard so much about you. His voice was low, intimate, his accent rich as espresso. I'm deeply sorry for your loss. She placed her hand in his, fighting a shiver as his long fingers closed around hers. His skin was warm, 
his grip strong and sure. And for the briefest, most insane moment, she had the urge to fall into his arms. To let him hold her up, absorb her grief, her rage, her loneliness. Swallowing hard, she extracted her hand. Thank you, she managed, hating the breathless catch in her voice. I appreciate your condolences. His eyes held hers, searching, probing, as if he could see straight through her brittle armor to the yearning, aching girl beneath. The girl who had never stopped wanting. A figure brushed past them, breaking the charged moment. A distinguished man with silver hair and kind eyes. The family lawyer, Mr. Hull. Samantha? He shook her hand briskly. Thank you for coming. I know your mother would be grateful. She forced a polite smile. Of course. I... Uh, I wouldn't miss it. Lies tasted like acid on her tongue. Because she had missed so much. Birthdays, Christmases, those rare, precious moments when her mother's armor would slip, and she would almost resemble the woman Samantha had ached for as a child. Well, then. Mr. Holcomb cleared his throat. Now that you're both here, we should discuss the will. Your mother was quite specific in her wishes. Samantha stiffened, dread coiling in her stomach. Even from beyond the grave, Eleanor Ray was still pulling the strings, still controlling her daughter's lives. Olivia lifted her chin, a look of triumph flaring in her eyes. I already know what it says. Mother told me months ago. She smiled thinly at Samantha. She's leaving everything to me. The house, the money, the shares in the company. All of it. The words hit Samantha like a punch to the solar plexus. She'd never cared about their family's vast wealth, had in fact spent the past decade building a career, a life, far from its gilded cage. But to be so thoroughly cut off, cast aside, Olivia smirked, smug satisfaction oozing from every pore. I'm sorry, Samantha. I guess Mother finally got tired of waiting for you to, to fall in line, to be the perfect daughter she always wanted. White-hot anger surged through Samantha's veins, and beneath it, a horrible, wrenching pain. The pain of a little girl who had only ever wanted to be loved, cherished, enough. Mr. Holcomb frowned at Olivia, something like disapproval in his weathered face. That's not quite accurate, Olivia. He turned to Samantha, almost apologetic. Your mother did leave you something. The summer house. On Willowbrook, Lake, Dot. The pain in Samantha's chest sharpened, twisted. The summer house. The one place that had ever felt like home. Like sanctuary. Where she had laughed and dreamed and dared to imagine a different life. Where she had fallen in love for the first time, with a boy as lost and lonely as she was. Now, it was hers. A bitter inheritance. A reminder of everything she couldn't have. She looked to Luca, needing something. Comfort. Understanding. But his gaze was fixed on Olivia, an odd intensity in those winter sky eyes. As if he was trying to read her mind, divine her secrets. And Samantha felt a chill skitter down her spine. Because this magnetic, captivating man, the man she found herself inexplicably drawn to, was still a stranger. A cipher. And in that moment, gazing at her sister's two bright eyes, her brittle, triumphant smile, Samantha knew. Nothing, and no one, was as they seemed in this haunted house of memory and mourning. And the secrets buried within its walls might just be the death of her. The funeral was a somber, stifling affair. Samantha sat in the front pew of the cavernous church, feeling the weight of a hundred pitying stares boring into her back. Beside her, Olivia dabbed delicately at dry eyes with a black lace handkerchief, the very picture of the grieving daughter. But Samantha knew better. Beneath the veil of sorrow, her sister was gloating, reveling in her victory, her place as the sole heiress to the Ray fortune. And Luca. He sat on Olivia's other side, a silent, steady presence. But every so often, Samantha would feel the heat of his gaze on her profile, intense and probing. 
as if he was trying to unravel the tangled knot of her emotions, to see past the stoic mask she wore like armor. It unsettled her, aroused her, and she hated herself for it. When the service was over, Samantha fled to the summer house. Her summer house now, she supposed? A refuge and a prison, all in one. She wandered through the sun-dappled rooms, trailing her fingers over the dusty bookshelves, the faded upholstery. Every corner held a memory, a ghost of the girl she had once been, the girl who had believed in love, in happily ever after. Before her mother's coldness, her father's abandonment had taught her the cruel truth. That love was a weakness, a liability, a lie. Samantha stepped out onto the back porch, the old boards creaking beneath her feet. The lake stretched out before her, serene and still, the setting sun painting the water in shades of gold and crimson, like the colors of the leaves, that long-ago autumn. When she had given herself to a boy with summer sky eyes and a crooked smile, when she had dared to hope, Samantha, da, da. She started, hand flying to her throat. Lucas stood at the foot of the porch steps, hands tucked into the pockets of his impeccable black suit. The fading light carved his face into planes and angles, shadowed and remote. Beautiful. Untouchable. Luca, dot, dot. She hated the breathy catch in her voice, the traitorous leap of her pulse. What are you doing here? He climbed the steps slowly, purposefully. A panther stalking its prey. I wanted to see how you were holding up. Losing a parent. It's a terrible thing. Samantha laughed, and the sound was harsh, brittle. Spare me platitudes. We both know my mother and I were hardly close. Lucas' head tilted, a considering gleam in his eyes. And yet, here you are. In the one place that meant something to you. The one place you felt, loved. The word was a blade between her ribs, sharp and brutal. Samantha flinched, wrapping her arms around herself. You don't know anything about me. About what I felt. Don't I? He moved closer, and she could feel the heat of him, the magnetism that drew her like a moth to a flame. I think you've spent your whole life searching for that feeling. That place. And now that you've found it again. His hand cupped her cheek, calloused fingers gentle on her skin. Samantha shuddered, eyelids fluttering closed. It had been so long since someone had touched her like this. Like she was precious. Cherished. You're afraid, Luca whispered, his breath a caress on her lips. Afraid to let yourself want? To need. Samantha's eyes flew open, and she jerked back, breaking the contact. Her heart raced. Her blood hummed, a dizzying cocktail of desire and terror. You're engaged to my sister. The words were ragged scraped raw from her throat. Whatever you think this is, whatever game you're playing, it ends now. Luca's eyes glittered, a challenge and a promise. Ah, uh, but Samantha. The game is just beginning. He turned and melted into the gathering dusk, leaving her shaken and aching, yearning for something she couldn't name, couldn't afford to want. But as Samantha stood there, watching the last of the light fade from the sky, she knew one thing with bone-deep certainty. Luca Moretti was dangerous. To her peace of mind, to her carefully constructed walls, to her heart. And if she wasn't careful, very careful, he would be her undoing. The next few days passed in a haze of grief and confusion. Samantha threw herself into sorting through her mother's possessions, packing away a lifetime of memories into neat, labeled boxes. It was easier than dealing with the turmoil inside her, the storm of emotions that Luca's presence had unleashed. She saw him everywhere. In the gleaming marble hallways of the main house, in the lush, manicured gardens. Always watching her, always with that knowing, penetrating gaze that seemed to strip her bare, to expose all her secrets, all her vulnerabilities. And with each encounter, each charged moment, Samantha felt her resolve weakening her walls crumbling. It terrified her, thrilled her. One evening, as she was preparing to leave the main house, Olivia cornered her in the foyer. 
Her sister's eyes were bright, feverish, her perfectly coiffed hair coming loose from its chignon. I know what you're doing, Olivia hissed, jabbing a finger at Samantha's chest. Trying to steal Luca away from me. Just like you've always stolen everything. Samantha recoiled, stung. I'm not trying to steal anything. Luca and I? There's nothing going on. Liar. Olivia's laugh was harsh, unhinged. I see the way he looks at you. The way you look at him. You can't hide it, Samantha. You've never been able to hide your sins from me. Samantha's blood ran cold. What are you talking about? Olivia leaned in close, her breath hot and sour. I know about that summer. The one you spent with Jude Carlyle. Mother's golden boy. The son she always wished she had. Her lips twisted, a cruel parody of a smile. Did you really think your little tryst would stay secret forever? Samantha stumbled back, her heart pounding. Jude, I. The boy with the summer sky eyes. The boy she had loved with all the reckless abandon of youth. The boy who had shattered her heart and left her in pieces. Stay away from Luca, Olivia snarled, eyes glittering with malice. Or I'll make sure everyone knows what a whore you are. With that, she turned on her heel and stalked away, leaving Samantha trembling and nauseous. The past she had buried, the shame she had run from. It was all rushing back, drowning her, pulling her under. She fled the house, blinded by tears, her chest so tight she could barely breathe. She didn't stop until she reached the summer house, until she was safely locked away in her childhood bedroom, surrounded by the tattered remnants of her innocence. And there, curled up on the faded patchwork quilt, she let herself break. Great, heaving sobs tore from her throat, years of pent-up pain and longing pouring out of her like blood from a wound. She cried for the girl she had been, for the woman she had become. For all the things she couldn't have, all the things she didn't deserve. She didn't hear the door open, didn't hear the soft tread of footsteps on the hardwood floor. But suddenly, strong arms were around her, pulling her into a warm, solid embrace. The scent of sandalwood and spice enveloped her, soothing her, anchoring her. Shh, Bella, I've got you. Luca's voice was a rumble against her ear, his hand stroking her hair with infinite tenderness. Let it out. Let it all out. And Samantha did. She wept in his arms, clinging to him like a lifeline. And when the storm had passed, when she was empty and aching and raw, he kissed her. Softly, reverently. As if she were something rare and precious. Something to be cherished. Luca... Her voice was a broken whisper, a plea, and a prayer. We count. It's wrong. Nothing has ever felt more right, he murmured against her lips. You feel it too. This connection between us. This need. She did. Oh, how she did. But, Olivia knows. About Jude? A meme. Luca stilled, his eyes searching hers. Your sister doesn't know anything. Only what she wants to see, what she wants to believe. He cupped her face in his hands, his touch achingly gentle. The past is the past, Samantha. It doesn't define you. It doesn't change how I feel about you. And God help her, but she believed him. Believed in the honesty shining from those winter sky eyes, in the strength of his arms around her. In the love she had been denying, fighting, for far too long. She kissed him then, pouring all her longing, all her hunger, into the press of her lips against his. And as they tumbled back onto the bed, skin against skin, hearts pounding in unison, Samantha let herself fall, let herself drown in sensation, in emotion, in the Luca dot dot. Tomorrow, there would be consequences. Tomorrow, she would have to face the wreckage of her past the uncertainty of her future. But tonight, tonight, she would love. Tonight, she would live. Tonight, in the arms of this beautiful, dangerous man. She would finally let herself be free. Dawn crept over the horizon, pale and tentative, as if even the sun was hesitant to expose the secrets of the night. 
Samantha slipped from Luca's sleeping embrace, her body aching in places it hadn't for years, her heart full to bursting. She padded to the window, wrapping herself in the faded quilt, and watched the mist rise off the lake. The world looked different in this liminal space between darkness and light. Softer. Kinder. Died. As if, for one shining moment, anything was possible. But, as the sun climbed higher, reality began to intrude. The chirping of her phone, shrill and insistent. The distant slam of a car door. And then, the sound she had been dreading. The click of heels on the porch steps, the rattle of the doorknob. Olivia Dot. Samantha's heart seized, her breath catching in her throat. She spun around, shaking Luca awake with trembling hands. Luca! Luca, wake up! She's here! His eyes flew open, alert and assessing. In one fluid motion, he was on his feet, tugging on his clothes with quick, efficient movements. Stay here, he murmured, pressing a swift, hard kiss to her forehead. I'll handle this. But Samantha shook her head, squaring her shoulders beneath the quilt. No, I know. This is my fight, Luca. My past to face. She met his gaze, willing him to understand. I have to do this. For both of us. Something fierce and proud kindled in his eyes, and he nodded once, sharply. Then we face it together. Hand in hand, they descended the stairs, ready to confront the reckoning that awaited. Olivia stood in the living room, her face a mask of fury and betrayal. Her eyes raked over their rumpled clothes, their joined hands, and her lips twisted into a snarl. You, you snake, she spat at Samantha. You even wait until mother was cold in her grave before you sank your claws into my fiancé. Samantha flinched, but held her ground. Olivia, listen to me. What happened between me and Luca? It wasn't planned. It wasn't to hurt you. Lar! Olivia's scream was ragged, unhinged. You've always been jealous of me. Always wanted what was mine. Well, no more. From the depths of her purse, she pulled out a gun. A small silver revolver that gleamed dully in the morning light. Luca tensed moving to shield Samantha with his body. But she stepped around him, hands raised in supplication. Olivia, please, put the gun down. This isn't the answer, isn't it? Olivia's laugh was brittle, edged with hysteria. You took everything from me, Samantha. My mother's love. My inheritance. The only man I've ever loved. Tears streamed down her face, but her hand was steady on the gun. If I can't have it, neither can you. Time seemed to slow, to stretch like taffy. Samantha saw Olivia's finger tighten on the trigger. Saw Luca lunge forward, desperate to protect her. Heard the crack of the gunshot, sharp and final in the stillness of the dawn. And then, pain. Blooming like a rose in her chest, hot and sticky. She looked down, saw the red stain spreading across her shirt. Felt her knees give way the room spinning around her. Luca caught her before she hit the floor, cradling her against his chest. She heard Olivia's wail, saw the gun fall from her nerveless fingers as the enormity of what she'd done crashed over her. Samantha! God, no. Please. Luca's voice was raw, broken. His tears fell on her face, warm and wet. Stay with me, Bella. Don't leave me. She tried to smile to reassure him. But the pain was too great, the pull of the darkness too strong. And as her eyes fluttered closed, as the world began to fade away, she saw them. The ghosts of her past, shimmering in the brightening light. Her mother, her face softened by a love Samantha had always craved. Jude, his summer sky eyes filled with regret and apology. And her father his arms open wide, his smile gentle and welcoming. Daddy, she whispered, reaching for him with the last of her strength. You're here. I never left, little bird. His voice was a balm, a benediction. I've always been with you, watching over you. Tears slipped down her cheeks, mingling with Luca's. I'm so tired, Daddy. So 
tired of fighting. Then rest now, sweetheart. He gathered her close, and she breathed in the scent of him, the scent of home. You've been so brave, so strong. But it's time to let go. Time to be at peace. Peace. It sounded so sweet, so tempting. But... Luca... Dot, dot. His name was a breath, a prayer. I can't leave him. He knows, little bird. He understands. Her father's voice was fading now, replaced by another. Luca's voice, fierce and desperate. Samantha! Samantha, come back to me. Please, my love. Come back. Love. Want. Yes. That's what this feeling was rising up inside her like the sun. Love, pure and powerful and eternal. Love, for Luca. For the life they could have, the future that stretched out before them like an unwritten page. And with that love, that unshakable knowing, Samantha opened her eyes. The first thing she saw was Luca's face, streaked with tears and alight with joy. He held her tight, rocking her back and forth as he murmured words of love of devotion, into her hair. You came back, he whispered, his voice raw with wonder. You came back to me. Always, she breathed, reaching up to touch his face. I'll always come back to you. In the distance, sirens wailed. The sound of salvation, of justice. Samantha knew there would be questions, recriminations. Olivia's reckoning to face. But in that moment, held safe in Luca's arms, feeling the steady beat of his heart against hers. Samantha felt only peace, only love, only the unshakable certainty that, at long last, she was exactly where she was meant to be. Home. Uttering.